Reverend Donna Maller, and I'm the spiritual leader of the Sonoran Desert Center for Spiritual Living in Amato, Arizona. We're here on Zoom with our music director, Heather O'Day, and Patricia Watson from Nova Scotia, who is serving as our practitioner of the day. We thank you for sharing your time with us. Heather will ring the bells now that open our service. Good morning, my name is Heather O'Day and I'm the music director at the Sonoran Desert Center. Good morning, everybody. I'd love for you to join me in an invocation. There is a power and a presence, oh, one life of all, and no other power can exist outside of the infinite. One love, God's love, our love. Oh, yes, we walk. Oh, yes, we walk in the love of God. So knowing in that place of perfect oneness, I speak my word for our sacred time together. I know and declare that the perfect outcome is accomplished. All of the words, the music, everything is divinely guided and it, by spirit. It is the inspiration of God in its allness. And each person feels this divine connection to the source, which is God. For each one of us knows that God is all there is. And right now and right here, I affirm this truth that that divine flow, that divine energy, that divine source that is God. Ah, just resides within each and every one of us. So I gratefully, gratefully accept this truth. And as I release my words into the law of the universe that only and always says yes, I just let it be. And so it is. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Patricia, for your words. Oh my goodness, and for your music today, thank you for leading us in the chant. <laughs> this, is, this is a song by Todd Glancy from 2019, and it's called Instruments of Love. Instrument of love. 
Thank you, Heather. It's really beautiful. You know, our celebration today is actually being recorded from our homes on Tuesday morning, but it's really meant for Sunday, May 10th, which is Mother's Day. So to all the mothers and grandmothers, we honor you this day. You know, I know that um, many people are sharing Mother's Day on Zoom. You know, whoever thought that Zoom would even be a household word. Um, or one of our more popular ways now, communicating with each other. So I do wish everyone a happy Mother's Day as we move into this strange and wonderful time. You now we're continuing our spiritual quest all during the month of May. And since we are honoring mothers, I thought the spiritual quest for love would be an appropriate topic. Because there are those of us who have had loving, supportive mothers. And there are those who've had more difficult times with our mothers. I used to think that I fell into that latter category. But through the years, as I have fought my own personal self-esteem issues and questioned my own worthiness, I have a greater compassion for what my mother went through and for her struggle with her own inner demons. And so today I can actually say that I love her very much. And I wish that she were alive so we could touch base from time to time. Our talks all this month begin with our spiritual quest. And last week I quoted Anthony DeMello. He defined the spiritual quest as a journey without distance. You travel from where you are right now to where you've always been, from ignorance to recognition. for all you do is see for the first time what you've always been looking at. So when you and I look for spiritual, uh, spirituality, we are like the fish swimming in the ocean, searching for something he was told was called water. In our spiritual quest, we begin to glimpse that there is something powerful, connective, beautiful, loving, that is inherent, hidden within everything. So even if we follow a guru, travel across strange lands, or fill our day with Zoom classes about enlightenment, the quest will always lead back to that something within us. We can't explain it, but we know it when we bump into it. Dr. Michael Beckwith was one of my uh, practitioner teachers. And I remember him saying that the attributes of spirit of God as wholeness, love, beauty, truth, peace, joy, exist in potential. And the only way then that these attributes can be expressed is in relationship, how these attributes show up through you and through me. Alan Watts says, through our eyes, the universe is perceiving itself. Through our ears, the universe is listening to its harmonies. We are the witnesses through which the universe becomes conscious of its glory, of its magnificence. So there is no God in the sky looking down on us in love or in judgment. But love, as an absolute quality of God, exists as a potential that is activated in relation to something or someone else. There, there are those who have experienced a direct relationship, a direct revelation of the attributes of God. Mystics have experienced a blinding, a blinding light of truth, a direct revelation of love. But I think for the most part, you and I are going to have to back in by acting as if until we are. You and I are the way whereby God's potential comes into being. God is the absolute, must express through the relative. God as oneness must express as and through the many. That means you and that means me. Love is, it is an attribute of God. It is forever. But it is only through our thoughts and actions that we make it visible. And so as we look at the actions we take, we have to ask ourselves, are they 
or are they not in alignment, which I sense is unconditional love? So in thinking about our spiritual uh, quest for love, I was drawn to Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Paul had discovered that some of the people had turned away from the church practices that he had put in place. Some leaders were exercising undue authority. Some were succumbing to the loose morals of the city. And Paul knew it was important that he make clear the intentions for the church and its leaders. So the first part of Paul's letters is about the business of the church. But starting in chapter 12, he begins to tell the church leaders that they are part of the one body and must work together as one by caring for each other equally. And the last line of chapter 12 should really be the beginning of the verse we know, chapter 13. Because Paul says to them, and yet I will show you the most excellent way. And he begins, if I speak in the tongues of men and angels that have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gifts of prophecy, and can fathom all the mysteries and all the knowledge. And if I have a faith that can move, move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and I surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. So Paul is <clears throat> making it clear that no matter what is done to show one's faith, no matter what skills we have or what actions we take, if love is not the motive force behind those actions, then we gain nothing. And the next part of the scripture defines love as it shows up in the world of affairs. It is Paul's way of showing his readers how their behaviors have not been expressions of that love. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. <laughs> Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. So for our lives today, <clears throat> practice, excuse me, practicing love means practicing kindness, patience, forgiveness, courtesy, humility, generosity, and honesty. It means consciously devoting time and attention to developing each of these characteristics in ourselves. As you and I adopt love as our way of life, our human relationships are enriched in such a way that our very lives are transformed, and thus, so is our world. In other words, as we cultivate these habits, they lead us to a deeper understanding of ourselves, of each other, and of that unconditional love that undergirds everything. As we express patience, we are connecting soul to soul respecting and embracing the other. We move from our ego to our heart as we recognize that we are each a unique expression of the one. So while we are all still sheltered, wouldn't this be a good time to express kindness? What can we do? I talked to one of our members and she goes on a daily walk and she collects those round river rocks she brings a few home, spray paints them in bright colors, and writes something uplifting with a permanent marker, and then drops them on her next walk for someone else to find. What a sweet way to practice kindness. And forgiveness isn't now, especially now, the time to make amends, to patch old wounds, to put down any feelings of being wronged. 
Paul tells us that love keeps no records of wrongs. Are we? This pandemic has given us time to see what is truly important to us. And if we are to have an open heart that expresses God's love, forgiveness tops the list. He also tells us that love does not lead with the, with the ego. Envy, boastfulness, self-pride, rudeness, self-seeking. All these come from our ego, from that place of separation that sparks a need in us to be better than someone else. Real love feels no separation. We are each expressions of the one. By dropping old ways of being that stem from the ego, love is allowed to flow through us unencumbered. And finally, he tells us, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. So I do think that if Paul were writing to us today, um, we would say that in our interpretation, we would say that he is telling us to act as if. Act as if love never fails. Act as if our ego needs and wants were inconsequential. Act as if we are compassionate and kind. Then it follows through that law of attraction that the love we want to manifest will ultimately be revealed through those actions. Philosopher William James first coined the idea of act as if. He said, act as if you are what you want to be then you will become that. And then Paul continues, and I find it interesting. He said, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see that a poor reflection is in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am known. Most Christian interpretations consider this to be talking about life after death, a time when we are with Christ and God in heaven and everything becomes perfectly clear. But as a metaphysician, I want to challenge that. Um, what if we are so moved by love that we can no longer see imperfection? What if that love, right here and right now, cleanses the mirror of my own soul so that I can see through each person, each counter, encounter to its true face? What if, through love, I know the truth of who we are? Beyond a shadow of a doubt, I know that I am God expressing as me. You are God expressing as you. There is no place where the one of us stops and the other begins. To me, this is bringing heaven to earth. And as he said, this is the most excellent way. We prove through our consciousness that a faith, hope, and love the greatest of these is love. Namaste. Thank you, Reverend Donna, for your words today very much. Ah, song by Sean Galloway.
Thank you, Mother, and thank you for joining us today. We would like to continue our messages and would appreciate your financial support. Please visit our website, www.cslaz.org, and click on the donate button. And we thank you so much for your consideration. And now I turn our service over to Patricia for our closing affirmative prayer. Thank you, Reverend Donna and Heather, for that beautiful music and your amazing words today. And so as we close, I express gratitude for the wonderful thoughts and words and music that flowed forth today. I know that God is expressed as me right now, and I know that God is expressed as each one of you as you move forward right here and right now. And how delightful it is to come together over these many, many miles. So each one of us knows, as Reverend Donna stated in her talk, love is patient. Love is kind. Love knows no boundaries, for love never fails. And we hold these truths in our hearts and in our minds, that faith, hope, and love are our touchstones. Love truly is the answer. So I am so eternally grateful for this truth, knowing that God is the source of our being. I just say thank you as I release my word and let it be, because God is all there is, and so it is. And happy, magical, and blessed Mother's Day, everyone. Namaste. Namaste.